the account to scrutiny support, the MERS office, PAs, allowances, anything like that. So it understated it uh, quite significantly. We did a proper piece of work uh, internally when we had more information, when we had more information, uh, whereby we could um, uh, we constructed this year's budget. And this year's budget was based on 82 full-time equivalent posts from which though we deducted 16 posts that were already in MERS travel. So it created an additional 66 posts. Um, and this does include committee services. It also includes the employment skills team, big investment in the program management office as well. So that, for that 66 full-time equivalent, as I said, that will change all the time. We already know that there's a requirement to um, for housing, uh, the government expects of us. We already know that the adult education budget in particular will need quite a significant number of staff to manage that. Um, so it, it's changing all the time. There'll be a revised budget brought to the combined authority within the next six weeks or so that will, that will pick up those issues. But the, they, won't, um, they won't have a particularly significant financial impact in the current year. The, the, the impact will be in next year's budget and you'll, you'll be included within that conversation. This is where the structure is. So you've got Combined Authority Chief Executive, as I mentioned. At the moment, that's Frank Rogers on an interim basis. Frank Rogers' substantive post is Mercy Travel Director General, that's vacant. And then there are two Mercy Travel Directors. This diagram Unfortunately, the way it's constructed makes it look like those are not equivalents to those they absolutely are. The combined authority directors also. Uh, it just recognises that, that, that the role is exclusively nurse travel. Um, Nick Nair, who some of you may know from Holton, um, we previously worked as the director of integrated transport. That's kind of responsible for the transport delivery <coughs> elements of nurse travel. But also with responsibility for our new highways functions and liaising with transport to the north. The Director of Commercial of Corporate Development is Liz Chandler, who is the Mercer Travel Director, and Liz is responsible for, is actually doing quite a lot of work on the Combined Authority and establishing the Combined Authority um, in terms of HR, in terms of terms and conditions, liaison with trade unions, and what the Combined Authority will actually look like. It also has a role within, a specific role within transport around what customers get out of transport. So this is involved in ticketing, smart ticketing, and a number of endems, particularly with an IT led. Um, so that's a key role. That's my role, Director of Corporate Services. The asterisk just means it's, I'm, I've got a full team. I am a Mercy Travel Director, as well as a CA Director, but it's just one role. The director of Policy and Strategic is Kirsty Pears, and the Director of Commercial Development and Investment is Mark Bowsfield. Scrutiny sits somewhere between corporate services and Kirsty. So in terms of actual management of the meetings and the agenda, chasing documents up, etc., that's done through Tree Bedford, who works with legal services. Um, but Kirsty Pierce's policy staff will actually probably be doing an awful lot of the work. So if, if scrutiny were to commission a piece of work on for the sake of argument, housing, there are policy officers within the policy team who specialise in housing who I would expect would be, would be engaged with you in doing that work. Well then you don't, you've got Trudy over here uh, who'd be chasing them up on your behalf. So that, that's the structure. Within the structure, underneath the Director of Corporate Services, there's an awful lot of staff, but there's not that many additional staff because we'll be serving MERS Travel and the Combined Authority. That's where the economies of scale are. There's a couple of additional posts within legal that we need. The Combined Authority has a new um, and dedicated monitoring officer, full-time monitoring officer, which we've, we've depended on districts in the past for that function. We're too big for that now. That's a lady called Jill Cool, who uh, John is from, from Sefton. And then there's a program office in the, the program office is where the additional resources <coughs> that the corporate function need to support the Combined Authority in any to any significant degree because the program office will be making sure we deliver on those huge schemes and that huge investment portfolio. 
Again, I've mentioned that uh, there are a number of policy people within that. That's, that is quite a, a large function, and that's developing into quite a large function. A lot of, though, a lot of that is, though, uh, externally funded. And then Mark's commercial and development team. I've mentioned already these emerging responsibilities, I just remind myself. Um, but adult education budget is huge. Housing and homelessness, we're not sure where, how that will evolve yet, but that could be um, highly significant. Culture, obviously the mayor and the leaders have got great ambitions in respect of culture. Brexit, preparedness too, is a key function of the combined authority. That's obviously an emerging picture. And then digital connectivity and tidal energy. I've mentioned under here transport pressures too, because although transport funding is reducing, transport ambitions are not reducing. So um, the, the, the special rail grant reduction from government creates a quite big problem for modes of travel that will need to be um, addressed, as will um, working on the, the resolution with the RMT that has just been mentioned. Those are two potentially significant transport pressures. But we've got other ones that are more positive and they're arising from the bus services bill, potential devolution of bus stations to us so that we can address more quickly the issues around station access than we can at the moment because the network rails assets, if they're ours, we can decide subject to affordability which ones we prioritise. So there are a number of emerging issues that will have to be considered in next year's budget. Uh, again, this, is uh, this slide is basically to say that we have only a limited amount of money from government, but we want to invest in development pipeline, future devolution, so we, we, you know, yeah, the, we, we are hopeful that there are other elements of, of uh, government funding that should be devolved to us locally and we can manage. Harnessing the power of the Mersey, which is high energy, digital economy and broader connectivity. So although we've got some money that some resources set aside for developing business cases in those areas, actually delivering the end game for those areas <coughs> will have a hugely significant um, financial impact. Employment and skills, business growth, we've got SIF applications for revenue, um, cap as Steve said, the capital allocations were we we're able to satisfy if they're good schemes. But we know that we've got good revenue schemes in areas like training and development that we can't satisfy at the moment because we've not got sufficient revenue. Um, and then we've got the, the activities we want to support apprenticeships. So potentially, there's upwards of 20 odd million pounds in funding that we need to find a way of discharging if we are to do everything that, um, that, that, that we aspire to do. And the <coughs> conversation that Steve's had with government around the capital and revenue split, which he's already mentioned. That's hugely significant for us. That helps immeasurably with some of those issues. Um, we need to, well, government probably need to move further. In terms of the work that SIPFA are doing, as I've just mentioned, this year's, this year's is only a transitional arrangement. Um, <coughs> We were assisted this year as well because government gave us an additional billion pound in rural capacity funding. That's only going to last this year and next. Um, so it's funded some of the additional policy staff. But what we don't, what we want to avoid is that um, we need to stop doing undertaking those functions when the grant runs out. So we need to find a way of replacing that, and we need to find a way of uh, <coughs> of replacing the transitional arrangement. So. Government's expectation, and again this is subject to a decision that the combined authority will have to take, is that we'll use the powers that we have already. And the powers that have been given to the mayor are the same no precepts. And obviously there was a long uh, discussion around no precept in last year's budget discussions, and it was felt that um, last year wasn't the right year because of changes in council tax last year and the increase in council tax that that you were being forced to pass on to your residents didn't make it a good year to add, um, add further burdens to households. And I've no doubt that the same discussions will, will occur in the current year. Um, but it is, it is a fact that government's expectation is that the combined authority will use the powers it's got. The other power that the combined authority's got as well 
is on business rates. There is the potential, but what, what, what I'm very conscious of here is, is to just express that there is no proposal to use this power at the moment, but it is a power that we've got. If the combined authority could identify a transformative scheme it wanted to fund, there is the potential for businesses that have impacted in those areas positively to uh, agree to pay an additional business rate supplement to help with the cost of those schemes. It's not something we're planning at the moment. We don't even have a scheme that, um, that we think would be, would be suitable. It's exactly how Crossrail has been financed in London. And the West Midlands are investigating the potential to use this mechanism for funding extensions to the rail network and the metro network. It isn't a general business rate supplement on businesses. It only would impact on businesses that are big businesses, over 50,000 rateable value. And again, it's an exciting new power, but it's not going to affect next year's budget or the budget after or the budget after that. And it's subject to a balance of those businesses. So although it's a new power, it, it's probably not something that we're going to switch on anytime soon. And the combined office has got borrowing powers as well. Uh, and then you, but we can't borrow to fund our money costs. Uh, and again, those are subject to us having the type of scheme that we would wish to borrow to fund. And that could be in the future, tidal energy and digital, because there is payback that will, uh, you know, we've got borrowing powers, but we can only borrow as you can, prudentially. So there is this higher authority of prudential borrowing that, uh, and my statutory role that will prevent us just from borrowing um, to get by. Uh, that's, that's just the, the finance order within the combined authority. Um, order which talks about how to preset. This is what a preset might look like, uh, because again, it's something that was asked at the workshop. Uh, if you were to cover this year's running costs, of 6.2 million by preset, that equates to 16 pound uh, a year for a band D property. Um, obviously, most of our residents are in a band A and B property, so it's proportionately less. Um, it would add 16 pound typically to a band D bill a year. And for every additional million pound that was funded through a preset, it works out at about three pound a year for a uh, band D property. About pound eighty for a, a band aid property, something of that order. Slightly different depending on the districts uh, that, that you're in, but that's pretty much where you're at with that. And this is, I'm drawing this to a close soon, but this is, uh, this is probably doesn't really produce great well anyway, but this is the funding that the combined authorities got, a little bit more detail. So you've got gain share funding of £30 million a year, up to 330 million pound a year in local growth fund. The growing places fund, which is the economic regeneration of support for businesses, that's 18 million. The rolling stock program that we're managing is a 450 million pound capital program. The single transport pot is 27 million pound a year. That funds a lot of that goes to yourselves to fund highways improvements. Um, that's not new government money, but it's rooted through the combined authority now instead of rooted through yourselves. Transforming cities funds, 134 million. And then we've got other funds as well, um, ESF, they're not new, but they are new to us and they do need managing. So it's just to demonstrate that the scale is, is enormous. Um, you add to that the issues around transport funding, which I'm not going to detail now, and the Transport Committee has a significant role in it. Um, well, there are issues within the budget that we do need to consider around transport funding, how much Mersey Travel gets, how much Mersey Travel can raise itself through fares and charges, and you can see that it is a very complex picture. Um, there are some more slides around the transport, but I'm, I'm conscious of time. I think these were the areas that I was asked to pick up on principally for this, for this purpose. Um, so I don't know if I can I'd, I'd ask the questions now. Um, uh, this is pretty much what I, I wanted to get across now. What I think the committee was asking before in terms of briefing on the budget, combined authority costs in particular.
to pay allowances to any of its members, and that includes the Transport Committee. The Transport Committee's allowances are paid by the host authorities. That is a matter for the host authorities. Budget has changed hugely this year. 
from the one that was, a, that was agreed in February, but what hasn't and will not change is the, is the net cost of, of those functions. say the net cost won't change. I absolutely meant to say the net cost won't change. The net cost won't change or will change? The net cost, it will be 6.2 million is the budget gap this year that we, uh, that the combined authority funded to pay for those running costs that couldn't be funded by any other means. That won't change. We're not going to be, well, the, it's not anticipated. We have to, well, no, we won't be coming back to districts and saying we need more money because we've spent more money this year. We have had to spend more money on capacity than was anticipated here, but that's been funded either by top slicing new grants or through the additional money that we've managed to get from government <coughs> or even through the arrangement that Steve's negotiating with government that we can use slightly more revenue than we thought we had available. So the gross cost will, I would expect, to change. It won't change by much though because a lot of those new functions are only going to have a part of the impact. A lot of those new functions we don't have anybody, we're not spending any money now. It's going to be next year where the, the, the impact really falls. Thank you. 
principality Chamstorf. He got a director of corporate development. Under another director, what is the point in having a director general? Well, these two people have actually been doing the job probably for over 12 months. I know they have seconded to do it, but now they're the permanent post. Why would we look to pay the sort of salary that is going to be paid to a, a director general? Because the ANCOS, I don't like to say it when there's members of the public here, but with the ANCOS, you're talking over a couple of hundred thousand pounds. <coughs> when you have a budget that we need to get from the council tax payers, and the only way to do it, I know you've given a very political answer, insofar as it's the combined authority who will decide on the precept. A precept now is going to be the only way of mi uh, mixing up with this £6.2 million. Pound. Because I would assume any authority to pay the initial one did what Holton did, and that was lend money to itself. You can only lend money to yourself so often, and then it has to be on a permanent basis looking for a precept. I get the impression by looking at that, it doesn't really matter how much it's going to cost because we're, we're making the council taxpayer foot the bill in the, in the long run anyway. I'm, I'm not too sure I, I actually like that. When we picked it up at the time, was it referred to the people there? Or was it referred to the combined authority? That questions had actually been asked regarding that post. Uh, yes, uh, I, I'm aware that that's a conversation that's, um, that, that, that the combined authority is having at, you know, at a, you know, and part of that will be led by budget, part of that will be informed by the Transport Committee. Given that the incumbent on that is my um, boss, I, I, I don't think it's appropriate for me to make any comments on um, on that. I don't, I don't think it's appropriate for any officers really. But we'll take the comments that you made and feed them back um, to, to to the mayor. But I would reiterate, as I say, that is not the policy that's been backfilled at the moment. There's no cost being picked up um, as a result of that. Sure. The cost of that post will be picked up. I'm not just concerned. You're saying about all these new functions and the new schemes are going to be brought in at some time in the future. And it's going to lead possibly to a £20 million shortfall. <coughs> £20 million for the country. Well, first and foremost, there's no, there's no decision to. Um, to, to go forward in those areas, this is the 20 million, and the first option would be not to do that. Um, how you finance it, again, it's, you know, I, I, I just have to keep repeating the previous answer. The, finance, the, the combined authority will need to find a mechanism of financing those activities, should it wish to do those activities. It will need, like every organisation, it will need to cut its cloth. Those were, were included because those are aspirations of the combined authority, but they're also expectations that government have of us. It all leads, you know, it all builds into um, the issues that need to be considered when we're looking at next year's budget and the budgets for years beyond that. I'm going to be to those now again. Can I ask the, 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 the answer that nobody has the previous question, but the rest of Steve's effect.
tell the industry uh, more than what you know, because at the moment some of these things have cropped up without your knowledge. Uh, we're having to admit the two mercy travel and um, they combine the authority together. Funding has been crossed, uh, moved even to uh, your offices have been doing various jobs. So until we've got a level playing field, we don't really know where we are. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. The information that you put um, on the budget by the next time over your scrutiny meets will be in the public arena yeah. because there will be a revised budget for 2018-19 which will pick up on all of the points that, that we've just discussed. And, and you know, finance team is in the process of uh, putting that together at the moment. Anybody else? Okay, can I um, ask, thank you John for your, for your lively and interesting presentation. <laughs> and uh, can I ask the committee to note the report? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to move on to the, I think that's the number nine work program for 1819. Uh, you will recall following discussions that took place in the formal work plan session on First and the officers have been working on the other work program and it resulted in an updated report which was circulated yesterday. Charles, will you do a real deal with this? That's true. Okay, thank you. Um, good afternoon, I'm Good morning, sir. Good afternoon, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Yesterday, a revised version of item 8 was circulated by Shruti Pepper. Um, as a supplementary agenda related to this particular item. Um, you will note that from the planning session held in August, um, members were asked to sort of rank topics um, based on the work plan. Um, and we had uh, those eight uh, that were submitted along the lines of energy renewables, development plan, social housing, and the LP accountability and structure. Um, from those top three, from those top three, um, it sets out in paragraph 4.1 of the report. Um, however, since then, a lot of things have taken place in terms of discussions with officers relating to those top three um, in terms of developing the scope for the task and finish groups. Um, a lot of information and evidence has come forward as we look at trying to scope the task and finish groups um, that there wouldn't be enough um, scope at the moment to conduct those um, task and finish groups in a, in a meaningful way for those particularly for those particular three topics. Um, and just to give you some detail behind that, without just saying it, um, energy and renewables and social housing, um, both areas are in the early stages of developing their own strategies. And in relation to the LEP, they are currently being reviewed by central government. So it's anticipated that the findings of that review. And will, won't be known until the end of October. Um, taking all of that into account, um, it's being proposed as part of that revised report that the energy and renewables and social housing to be committed that probably have a better opportunity to be engaged in that process um, and in those respective strategies through a, a workshop um, later on in the year outside of the committee timetable. Um, and in terms of the LMP, <coughs> It's being proposed again through the revised report um, that again a workshop also be arranged for this to be discussed when we get the recommendations arising from the review of um, from government and will be used on that basis. Um, what's also being pro proposed in the revised report is that in terms of the remaining five topics um, that's in that report from paragraph 4.1, um, we'll continue to work with officers to develop the work program um, and uh, if things become apparent during that development process, then we can propose a task and finish group um, later in the municipal year, um, going into um, 2019. And then subject to obviously the committee's approval for this development of the work program to be undertaken um, with the consultation of the chair and vice chair uh, appointed, um, that's what's being proposed. Um, I'm happy to take questions on behalf of um, that work program if necessary. Any questions? Any comments? Questions uh, made on the 
does anybody want to meet with any other executive board required authority member to discuss the portfolios at all? Obviously, yes. Right, recommendations. Uh, can we agree to, to establish the workshops as set out? Section 4 of the report uh, authorises the statutory scrutiny officer and monitor officer in consultation with the certified chairs to develop the work programme for 1890. Uh, Authorise the treasurer in consultation with the certified chairs to develop the budget consultation process with the SCI by authority. Consider the inclusion of additional terms for future meetings of this committee and note the progress reports on the recommendations of the their previous staff and finish groups will be provided to future meetings with this committee. Just, to, just before you do that, Chair, um, on the issue of recommendation, we don't actually have a chair. Uh, uh, it, is it a problem? Well, to be fair, it is. Um, but uh, given that we were called and we got two vice chairs, and I think, I'm thinking that you'll have to join in after the event. <laughs> we can add it to the resolution when appointed. We do need to uh, resolve that issue. Yes, we do. we do need to resolve that issue. And also, could we just add to the recommendation to Council Murphy's suggestion for a presentation from the office of the portfolio holder for transport?